Welcome to the GCN Show. That w- that was really good, mate. But I reckon, I reckon I'm just not going to be able to make it on the Global Mountain Bike Network. Why not? Well, I- let's see some air, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a real effort. To be fair, actually, this should uh, soften the blow a little bit. I found Rob Warner's stash. I already found that earlier, actually. I took that Jack name off. I've just left Daniel's. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's actually your whiskey now, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. So what's coming up on the show this week? Well, we've got loads for you yet again. Is my hair all right? Perfect. We've got a race wrap-up, which includes Strada Bianchi and Parry Nice, plus some smaller races as well. Plus, we have a summary of the CIRC report. We do indeed. We've also got news from Boulder, a look at the women's Strada Bianchi, plus my tweet of the week, tech of the week, and a recap of North American racing. We've got a bit of a throw to the North American Handmade Bike Show. We've got tweet of the week, caption of the week, comment of the week. And unfortunately, you'll have to make do with Matt's canned laugh this week. Although, no change yeah, there then. Same as usual. He, uh, he's he gone off to practice pumping. Can you turn that camera off a minute? <laughs> 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 Some huge news this week, and that is that Domestique has sailed through the 2000 Twitter follower mark. In fact, he's all the way up to 2600. So he has scheduled a new Ask Dom, and you can ask all your questions between 8 and 9 p.m. GMT on Wednesday, the 11th of March. Yep, yeah, ask anything you like. Just use the hashtag Ask Dom, and then you can benefit from his wealth of cycling knowledge. I wonder what he thinks about the uh, CRC report. Hmm, sick. Ask him on Wednesday. The first European World Tour race of the year started on Sunday in the form of Paris-Nice. It was Etik's quick-step rider Michal Kwiatkowski, the world road champion, who won the prologue, but just three-tenths of a second ahead of the world hour record holder Rowan Dennis. Kwiatkowski's teammate Tony Martin finished in third place at seven seconds. Yeah, now with that win, Kwiatkowski became the eighth Etik's quick-step rider to post a win in 2015. And interestingly, he was the fifth Etik's quick-step victory of the last week, since they kind of ballsed up the finale of Omloop Het Newsblad. Now, the first few road stages of Paris Nice look like they're suited more to the fast men, but the next appointment for the GC riders fighting it out for the overall will be stage four because it finishes up the Col de la Croix de Chauberet. You know what? We should ask uh, Domestique what the Croix de Chauberet is like, actually. He'll be able to tell us. Are you sure it's not Chauberet? Well, he might be able to advise us of that as well. Just ask mm, him on Twitter. I'm sure it's Chauberet. Ask Dom Wednesday. Time for caption of the week now. Last week's photo, you will remember, is this one of Matteo Trentin riding across the road up the Tyneberg in Belgium. Our winner is Dan Alexander, who said this. But you told me to split the peloton. Well done, Dan, get in touch with us and we shall send you some GCN swag in the post. This week's photo is this one of two riders in the Italian national team at Strada Bianca, one of whom is Marco Canola. We shall get you started. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a flat, mate. No air in that, no. That's good, mate. That's really good. Yeah. Well done. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. Try again. Yeah, it's definitely flat, mate. (laughs) (laughs) That was better, actually. Yeah. The Strada Bianca may only be eight years old, but it's quickly established itself as one of the most prestigious races in the calendar. And this year, organisers RCS actually have added a women's event to the programme too. Yeah, but not only did they all have to contend with a multitude of climbs and gravel roads, but this year they had to contend with some very strong winds. So strong, in fact, that a number of riders actually got blown off the road. It was a disaster for Simon Gerrans of Orica Green Edge. That was his first race of the season. He crashed out of a fractured elbow. And also Ian Stannard, the team Sky Rider who won on loop Het Newsblad just a week ago, crashed out with quite a large and deep gash to his knee. Yeah, I particularly feel sorry for Simon Gerrans. That's yeah. brutal. Anyway, back to the racing. Three riders proved significantly stronger than the rest, and it was Zidnek Stibar who was clearly relishing the tough roads. He got the better of Greg Van Avermaet and Alejandro Valverde on the brutal one-kilometre climb up to the finish in Siena. One of the most notable points of the race, in fact, si, I thought, was the fact that Peter Sagan couldn't follow mm. the rest of the ride when it really started to go hard towards the end. Yeah, what do you think? Blue's doors? Looked like it. It certainly looked like he blew up, but I'm sure that, uh, well, we were all expecting 
expecting more from him. Certainly last year and the year before, we would have expected him to win races like that. And Tinkoff is probably expecting more. Yeah, not a great ROI. <laughs> what? ROI? Re return on investment. Return it's on investment. Yeah, business speak that, sir. The inaugural women's Strade Bianchi turned into a 20 kilometer demonstration of strength from American Megan Guarnier. The former U.S. national road champ escaped on the penultimate gravel section, allowing her Bulls Dolman's teammate Lizzie Armstead a free ride in the chase group. The next time the peloton would see Guarnier was on the podium. She held her lead, finishing 37 seconds ahead of the bunch. Armstead took second, while Elisa Longoborghini of Wiggle Honda finished third. Comment of the week now, and this was submitted by Lee Dorney underneath the How to Train for Short Climbs video. Lee very astutely has said, I think we should all lament for a while how much fitness Dan the Boss Lloyd has lost. Hashtag say a little prayer. Has he not watched our top 10 ways to be a GCN presenter video where we talk about how good we have to be at acting? That That's was true. an act. That was great acting. That was great acting. <sighs> anyway, should we see what's over in Boulder? Oh yeah. What is your comment of the week this week, Neil? All right, now it's time for my comment of the week. The North American Handmade Bicycle Show was on over the weekend. And for those of us that like a little bit of bike porn, this is as good as it gets. And there are too many highlights to mention, but this one, which won the Best New Builder Award, is absolutely superb. I'm not entirely sure about the name though, Dan. Love Baum? Love Balm? Yeah, it seems to have put an A in where it wasn't needed. Love Balm. Over to Boulder now for Tech of the Week. Is it Bo is that way, Boulder? Boulder's that way, yeah. After a long hiatus, we are back with Tech of the Week. Last week, Zip announced that they are embracing new axle standards. The hubs on their 303 Firecrest tubulars will now be compatible with 9, 12, or 15 millimeter options. The same goes with their 303 and 202 Firecrest clinchers. The six bolt disc hubs come with quick release end caps attached which can be swapped out for 12 or 15 millimeter options. Zip's announcement comes just two weeks after Bontrager announced that its Aeolus carbon race wheels would be available with disc brake hubs, also offering swappable through axle compatibility. All that said, what does it really mean? Well, for the Pro Peloton, not a lot. You won't see this technology in the bunch, at least not this year. For the consumer, it means more options. And fellas, I'd love to hear your take on disc brake race wheels. Well, yeah, for those people with discs, it is pretty exciting actually to have some super light race ready wheels. But it's the axle standards that are bothering me a bit, it has to be said. As a consumer, where do you invest your money in order to future proof your bike? Through axles or quick releases? Now, not even the bike industry can decide. In fact, some companies have even got both in their ranges, quick releases and through axles. And I appreciate an industry standard is never going to happen, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? It, that sounded a little bit like a marginal pain sigh. God, yeah, maybe that was a marginal pain uh, sigh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that uh, was this week's marginal pain from Cy Richardson. I haven't finished yet, though. Oh. For my money, through Axel. A quick roundup then of the other races which took place last week. Firstly, last Wednesday at Le Samin, Chris Bookmans of Lotto Soudal managed to get the better of a very strong Ethics Quick Step team, whilst Eve Lampet from that Ethics team won the three days of West Flanders, taking a stage win along the way. Yeah, and over in the Tour of Lankawi, it was Andrea Gardini who's got the better of Caleb Ewan twice in the first two opening sprint stages. But that race is going to have a slightly different character this year. The iconic Genting Highland stage has actually had to be removed due to roadworks on that climb. Do you know our very own Matt Stevens has finished fourth overall in Lankawi 15, I did 15 know that. years ago? I did know that. Chris Horner won it. Do you know who was in fifth just behind Matt? Go on, tell me. Floyd Landis. My word. That was an era, wasn't it? Hmm. Well, fair play to Matt for uh, getting one over Floyd. Now it's time for a quick North American update. Megan Guarnier's win at the Women's Strata Bianchi was the highlight for North Americans in a week that also saw Tanner Putt finish eighth at Grand Prix Les Samines. The United Healthcare rookie missed the winning move as seven riders went clear in the final section of cobblestones. But he won the sprint from the first chase group, prompting suggestions that the 22-year-old Utah native could be America's next great classics hope. On March 1st, 
Rising star Mike Woods of Optum took a solo victory at the Classica Internacional Lule in Portugal. The win came a week after racing the Volta Algarve, where the Canadian rider placed fifth in that race's queen stage. It's time for Club of the Week now. And this one was sent in by Itai Hada, an under-17 rider for the CCC team, not the Polish one, but the City Cycling Club, who are based in Israel. They've got a very wide range of ages, from fourth grade up to 50-year-olds, and they compete in both cross-country mountain biking and road racing. Much like yourself there, Dan. Yeah, very versatile, just like me, able to present as well, on any channel. Well, possibly just one. Yeah. Anyway. Next week, we are not going to be doing Club of the Week. What we would like from you instead is for you to submit your bike modification. So anything that improves performance and saving you money. So send them in, either a YouTube video or something on Facebook or Twitter. We want to see your bike hacks. Please. Or Instagram, Global Cycling Network. True, Instagram as well. Bike hacks, we want them. The eagerly awaited CIRC report was released this week, and for those looking for incendiary headlines, it has not disappointed. One testimony there has actually even painted a really bleak picture of the current pro scene as well. Now, as you know, sire, I'm not known for my statistical ability, but I do feel that it has to be said that the opinion of one person surely doesn't necessarily hold up if you are looking for a statistical significance. No. It doesn't, Dan. And actually, to be fair, I agree that 90% value that they've been banding around, while it might have made the headlines, isn't necessarily that good. But regardless of that particular statistic, though, I think the UCI should be applauded for going through with this report. And let's just hope that they can actually put into place all the recommendations that it makes and close up those final loopholes. Stuff coming up for you on the channel this week, starting with Wednesday, where we're going to show you how to train for long climbs. Now the first session is a classic when it comes to increasing your functional threshold power and actually it's pretty simple, it just involves doing two 20 minute efforts. And on Thursday we're going to show you the top 10 beards in cycling. Luminous facial hair. With a remarkable resemblance for Jesus, Cravens combines a chevron moustache with luxuriant beard. Presumably we've made that list. Huh? Well you'd have thought so, but apparently not. But I think Matt might have done with that pathetic attempt he made the other week. It's unbelievable. Uh, and on Friday, we're going to... Hang on a minute. Let me guess. Bikes of the Women's Pro Peloton. Do you not watch the channel? That actually did go out last week. I did see that, actually. Uh, no, point. Friday is actually a core stability session from the Tinkoff Saxo team. Ah, excellent. Well, on Saturday, we've got Vincenzo Nibali's Pro Bike. On Sunday, it's off the back. I believe you're at the helm again, Dan? Yeah, probably. Probably, like a boss. And then on Monday, we've got how to choose your gear ratios. Again, with Dan, like a boss. Yeah. Complicated subject, full of numbers. Tweet of the week now, and this one from Nathan Haas of Cannondale Garmin. Really caught our attention. I'm confused. It looks like either a cycling showdown or a year six disco. Hashtag boys germs, hashtag girls on one side. Kind of see what you mean actually there, Nathan. <laughs> what about you, Niao? Have you got a tweet of the week? You are a bit silent last week. Right, well, my tweet of the week, and I hope it makes it through the edit this time, comes from Texan native Lawson Craddock. The giant Albison rider tweeted that he is back on the bike, riding outdoors for the first time since a nasty crash at the Tour Down Under left him with fractures to his sternum, wrist, and rib. What made this my tweet of the week beyond the fact that it's just good news, was that he linked to a video from the Will Ferrell NASCAR movie Talladega Nights, specifically to the scene when Ricky Bobby returns from injury and creeps around the track at 26 miles per hour. If you haven't seen it, it's worth a look. We shall leave you, as always, with Extreme Corner, oh. which this week is actually our very own Matt Stevens riding down a really gnarly rock garden. Actually, mate, it's not. This week on Extreme Corner, we have captured Dan getting air on a mountain Really? Bike. Yeah, you've got to look closely, but here it is. Oh, Lloydy is on a 150 mil travel Santa Cruz Bronson getting pretty Check mad. this out, this is going to be epic. That is, oh, look at that, mate. That is epic. That must be a good, what? Three inches? No, nah, that's seven inches. That looks more like three inches to me. No, I definitely call that seven inches. 
Uh, anyway, if you'd actually like to see our collaboration between GCN and GMBN, you can do so by clicking up there. It's well worth a watch. Absolutely, it's a cracking video. And if you want to see the Dirt Shed Show on GMBN, which is kind of like the GCN show, with a better set, then click down there and watch that. <laughs>